we are back with part five of this week's reading of the Messianic Jewish Family Bible, Tree of Life Version, the TLV, and we're about ready to go into chapters 34. It's always amazing how quickly we get into um, into five parts of this, and there's so much material and so much to discuss in within 10 chapters of of about the Bible. It's just so action-packed and full of information that it's so easy to to end up with seven parts, um, which we may end up um, with this, um, at least six. So we're going to start with chapter 34 now in this part. Borders of Israel. And I spoke to Moses saying, Command Benai Israel and say to them, When you enter the land of Canaan, these are the boundaries of the land being allotted to you as an inheritance. Now, this is very important because now, now remember, Gad, Reuben, and Manasseh were going to have the east side of the Jordan and pay attention closely to everything God is giving to Israel. This is what their land should look like, and it does not look anything close to what Adam and I gave to them. Um, it actually is very little. Um, so what was is their inheritance is, <laughs> it has not um, held out over the centuries and it actually should be restored to them. Yet they're being called occupiers. And that is so far from the truth um, because God gave them this land. It's God given and he is the creator. He created the land. So he has every right to give it to who he wants to give it to. And it belongs to Israel, no matter what people want to say. And this is where the lie of the devil comes in. Um, and he is allowed the world to believe that Israel is occupying land. They can't be occupying land that was given to them by God, the creator himself. So that is a lie straight from the pit of hell. So pay attention to what, what is actually given to Israel. Like, like I said, you, you already know east of the Jordan, what Reuben, Gad, and the half tribe um, of Manasseh is, it has inherited. So here we go. (laughs) Your southern side will run from the wilderness of Zin along the border of Eden to the southern end of the Dead Sea on the east. Your border will cross of the Scorpion Pass and continue to Zin and south of Kadesh Barnea. Then go on to Hazar Adar and on to Asman. Then the border will turn from Asman to the Wadi, W-A-D-I, of Egypt and end at the sea. So these are pretty large borders and boundaries um, that, that Adonai is giving. Your western boundary will be the coast of the Great Sea. This will be your western border. Your northern ba- northern boundary will be by running a line from the Great Sea to Mount Hor, then from Mount Hor to Levo Hamath, then the boundary will go to Zedad. The border will continue on to Zifron, ending at Hazar Inan. This will be your northern border. For your eastern border, run a line from Hazar Inan to Shepham. From Shepham, the boundary will descend to Ribla on the east side of Ain, that's A-I-N, continuing along the eastern slopes of Kinneret. From there, the border will go down along the Jordan, ending at the Dead Sea. This will be your territory with its surrounding borders. That's a lot of territory. Um, So that all belongs actually to Israel, according to Adonai. I hate to tell <laughs> some people who want to say otherwise. Moses commanded Benaiah Israel, saying, This is the land which Adonai has commanded that you are assigned by lot to the nine and a half tribes. For the tribe of the sons of Reuben by their ancestral houses, the tribe of the sons of Gad by their ancestral houses, and the tribe of Manasseh have already received their inheritance. These two and a half tribes have received their inheritance on the east side of the Jordan at Jericho. 
towards the sunrise. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, These are the names of the men who will allot the land to you, Eleazar the Kohen and Joshua, son of Nun. Also you are to select one prince from each tribe to allot the land. These are their names from the tribe of Judah, Caleb, son of Jephunneh, from the tribe of the sons of Simeon, Shemuel, son of Amahud, from the tribe of Benjamin, Eladad, son of Kislon, from the tribe of the sons of Dan, the prince of Buki, son of Jogli, from the sons of Joseph, from the tribe of the sons of Manasseh, the princes to Behaniel, son of Ephod, the prince from the tribe of the sons of Ephraim is to be Kemuel, son of Shif- Shiftan. The prince from the tribe of the sons of Zebulon is Elisaphon, son of Parnach. The prince from the tribe of the sons of Issachar is Peltiel, son of Azian. The prince from the tribe of the sons of Asher is Ahihud, son of Shalomi. The prince from the tribe of the sons of Naphtali is Pedahel, son of Amahud. These were those Adonai commanded to apportion to Benaiah Israel, the land of Canaan. So that is chapter 34. Um, And again, in recapping, they reached the borders of Canaan and the Lord spoke to Moses to instruct Benaiah Israel, explaining all of the land being given to them for an inheritance and how to divide it. And Moses addressed Benaiah Israel in regards to this. And he's preparing them to to go to get their inheritance. That there's a lot that that takes place in order to to have this happen. So as I said, you can imagine um, with uh, how that's described, how large an area that really does belong to Israel, much larger than what it is today. So chapter 35, Cities for the Levites. Adonai spoke to Moses in the plains of Moab by the Jordan at Jericho, saying, Command Benaiah Israel to give to the Levites from the inheritance of their possessions cities in which to live. They are also to give the Levites pasture lands around the cities. Thus they will have cities to live in and pastures for their cattle, flocks, and all their livestock. Their pastures you give the Levites will extend out from the walls around the cities for a thousand cubits. You are to measure outside the cities 2,000 cubits on the east side, 2,000 cubits on the south side, on the west side, 2,000 cubits, and on the north side, 2,000 cubits. These are to be the pasture lands for the cities. Six of the cities you give to the Levites are to be cities of refuge to which anyone who kills anyone may flee. We're going to talk a little bit about that in a little bit. Besides these, you are to give the Levites 42 more cities. In all, you are to give the Levites 48 cities with their pastors. The cities that you are to give to the Levites from the possession of Benaiah Israel should be proportionate to the inheritance of each tribe. Give many from the one who has many and few from the one who has few. Adonai spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to Benaiah Israel, saying, When you cross the Jordan into the land of Canaan, you are to select cities, which will be cities of refuge. Here we go. To which one might flee if he has killed someone by accident. So that way he doesn't get lynched, in other words, um, by an angry mob, that he can actually flee until there's a trial, you know, to prove his innocence. They are, to, these, they are to be cities for refuge from the avenger, so the manslayer may not die before standing trial before the assembly. The six cities you designate are to be your cities of refuge. Designate three cities on this side of the Jordan and three in the land of Canaan as cities of refuge. These six cities of refuge are to be for Benai Israel as well as for the outsider and the visitor in their midst for anyone killing a person by accident. Now, if the manslayer strikes someone with an iron object so that he dies, he is a murderer and the murderer must die. If anyone has a stone in his hand, I mean, that's a deliberate act. 
If anyone has a stone in his hand that could be deadly and strikes anyone with it so that he dies, he is a murderer and the, the murderer must die. Or if someone has a wooden object that could kill and strike anyone so that, so that he dies, he's a murderer and the murderer must be put to death. The blood avenger himself may put the murderer to death. When he finds him, he is to kill him. If anyone pushes someone maliciously or throws anything at him with deadly intent or with hostility, hits him with his fist so that he dies, the one hitting him is a murderer. The blood avenger may put the murderer to death when he finds him. But if he pushes him suddenly or throws an object at him with no intent or without seeing him, should drop a stone on him resulting in his death, but he was not his enemy and intended him no harm, the assembly must judge between the manslayer and the avenger of blood according to these regulations. The assembly must protect the manslayer from the avenger of, the, of blood. The assembly should send him back to the city of refuge to which he had fled, and he is to remain there until the death of the Kohen Gadol, who was anointed with the holy oil. But if the manslayer should go outside the city limit of his city of refuge to which he has fled, and should the blood avenger find him outside the city limits of the refuge city, the blood avenger may put him to death without being guilty of his blood. The manslayer must stay within the limits of his city of refuge until the Kohen Gadol dies, and after the death of the Kohen Gadol, the manslayer may return to his property. And we're talking the Kohen Gadol is the high priest. These are to be the statutes of justice for your generations and all your dwelling places. Everyone killing anyone shall be put to death as a murderer, only on the testimony of more than one witness. So this is where two witnesses come into play, and that's also a type and shadow, as we're going to see as we continue to read. Spoiler alert. No one is to be put to death on the testimony of only one witness. You are not to accept ransom for the life of a murderer. He deserves to die and is to die. Do not receive a ransom for one who has fled to, to his city of refuge, allowing him to return to his land before the Kohen Gadol's death. In other words, bribing, ransom, bribing money. Um, you are not to pollute the land in which you are. Blood pollutes the land. And no atonement can be made for land polluted by blood shed, except by the blood of the one who sheds it. You are not to defile the land where you live, where, where I dwell, for I dwell among Baniah Israel. So that is um, pretty sound instructions on, on that from Adonai. So to recap, chapter 35, the Lord spoke to Moses regarding the cities for the Levites as their inheritance. And in the second part, there are the six cities of refuge, three cities on the east side of the Jordan and three cities within, within Canaan. Um, and these are cities in case someone kills someone by accident, they could flee to. And we just read all the ordinances for, for all of that. And if they were truly murdering, um, contemplating murder and murdered someone, they are actually, uh, it is punishable by death to them, to the murderer. So we're going to now move to chapter 36, further ruling about daughter's inheritance. The heads of the ancestral family of the children of Gilead, son of Machir, son of Manasseh, from the sons of Joseph, came and spoke before Moses and before the princes of the chiefs of the fathers of Benaiah Israel. They said, My lord, Adonai commanded to give the land by lot as an inheritance to Benaiah Israel. My lord was also commanded by Adonai to give the inheritance of our brother Zeph Zephalaphad to his daughters. If they become wives of men from other tribes of Israel, their inheritance will be taken from our ancestral inheritance and added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they marry. So it will be deducted from the allotment of our inheritance. When the Jubilee year comes, their inheritance will be added to the inheritance of the tribe into which they marry and deducted from the inheritance 
of our ancestral tribe. Then Moses commanded Benaiah Israel at the mouth of Adonai, What the tribe of the descendants of Joseph is saying is correct. This is the word that Adonai commands for the daughters of Zophilophad. Badad. Bahad. <laughs> Boy, I'm getting tongue-tied here. I'm saying they may become wives to whomever they please, as long as they marry within the family of the tribe of their father. So no inheritance may be passed from tribe to tribe among Benaiah Israel. Each one of Benaiah Israel will keep the inheritance of the tribe of his ancestors. Every daughter receiving an inheritance in one of the tribes of Benaiah Israel should marry within the family of her father's tribe so that Benaiah Israel will each possess the inheritance of his fathers. No inheritance may pass from tribe to another tribe, for each tribe of Benaiah Israel is to keep its inheritance. So Zephalophahad's daughters did just as Adonai commanded. Zephalophahad Zephalophahad's daughters, Mala, Terza, Hagla, Milka, and Noah, married sons of their uncles. They married within the families of the sons of Manasseh, son, son of Joseph, and their inheritance remained within the tribe of their ancestral family. These are the mitzvot and judgments that Adonai gave by Moses' hand to Benaiah Israel on the plains of Moab at Jericho along the Jordan. So in recapping the final chapter of this week's reading, um, the marriages of the heiresses is addressed. The daughters of Zephalophahad. This addresses this and that if they marry any of the sons of the other tribes, their inheritance shall be taken away. And what it would be taken away, it would be actually added to the other tribe um, because they're marrying outside of their tribe. So they were told um, they really needed to stay within their tribe um, to keep that inheritance equal and 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 what belonged to that tribe uh, would stay in that tribe. And they agreed to do so and 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 did so. So that is the end of this week's reading and the end of the fourth book of the Torah, the the end of the book of Numbers. Next week, we are going to begin um, Deuteronomy, the final book of the Torah, the fifth book of the Law of Moses. And we're going to actually do the introduction and chapters 1 through 12. And then... We're, we're going to divide that into three weeks as well. There are 34 chapters in Deuteronomy. Moses um, continues to write into the book of Deuteronomy, but he doesn't write the very end, ending chapter. And we will talk about that as we get to that. Um, who writes it? And you will learn um, how that continues as well. And so that is the end of our of our lesson for this week. I'm going to close this with prayer and then do an, an altar call. And I am actually going to do that in the next part because we're already close to 19 minutes. <laughs>